Hey everybody, this is another part of our series on creating paths in the FreeCAD Path Workbench using Python. Uh, in our last video, we finished up where we had the block, we could select the top face, and we could execute our script to generate the path um, and see the back plot. And I said we'd take this out to the shop and, and try milling this block. We can't quite do that yet because there's still something wrong with it. If you scroll down, select the path object that we created and inspect it, you'll see that there's no feed rate uh, in here at all. There's no tool change information and there's no feed rate. Uh, if we post-process the job, we'll see the tool change as it should be, but it's, we still won't have any feed rate associated with these moves. And that's because we're generating them manually and we're just not putting it in there. Uh, so let's go, let's fix that problem. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the order that some things get created. So at the very bottom, there are uh, two commands. There's this one uh, where it creates the O object that's our, our, our document object to hold our path, and it adds it uh, to the document. And I'm going to cut that object, and I'm going to paste it in uh, right after our global statements here. So that will add the object to, uh, to the document. And then the last command in here is a call to path utils. And it takes that object that's created and it sticks it underneath the tree, underneath the, uh, the job object here. And so I'm going to do both of those first. Now this uh, document object that holds the path won't have any path data, any commands or anything associated with it yet. Uh, we'll still do that at the very end, but I want to have this up here. Uh, and the reason is that as I'm generating the commands, I'm going to want to stick in the F parameter for the feed rate, but I don't have that yet. So I need to, to uh, get it from the uh, default tool controller and then pass those values in. Um, so the, uh, um, the way that I'm going to get that is... Uh, I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to say tool load equals freecad.activedocument.tc. That's because the name of this object is TC, and I'm just going to, I'm making an absolute reference to this, this object in the tree. The, uh, I could be a little bit smarter about searching through the object and finding it, uh, but that's a little bit overkill for where we're at now. If you want to see more of that stuff in another video, uh, I'll do something a little more sophisticated in a future series that shows you how to parse through and find tools and so forth. Uh, now that I've got a reference to the tool, this tool load object, I just need to access its two properties uh, for its vertical and horizontal feed rate. So my vert feed is going to be equal to tool load dot vert, oops, vert feed dot value. And the horiz feed equals tool load dot horiz feed dot value. And now I've got two variables that hold those values, and I can use them in the remaining script. So uh, if I scroll down, I'll see that there's a command here that's doing a, a uh, vertical move. And so I just need to pass in the F, and it's going to be equal to vert feed. And here are where I generate my... my uh, X, Y moves or my Y moves, and I'm going to pass in feed rate is equal to or is feed, and I'll copy that and do the same thing there. And I've got one more that generates G1 command right here. And I'll do the same thing. I'll use horizontal feed on this as well. This is a combination move. It's moving in both uh, X, Y, and the Z move, but I'll move at the horizontal feed rate. Okay, so now if I've done everything correctly, I can delete my old path, switch over, select my top face, and execute the new one. And I've got a path generated, 
And now if we inspect that path, you'll see that we have these uh, feed, move, feed rates uh, for each command that's in there. Okay, now uh, if I edit my properties for the job, um, I'll show you what I've got in here. Uh, for the post processing, I have selected Linux CNC as my post processor. I'm going to show the editor as a default argument. And I can even, if I wanted to, go ahead and set the name of the file that I want it to spit out. But I'm going to leave that blank for right now. Now I select my job and hit the post processing button. Now it gives me the opportunity to select my file. And I'll say that this is going to be called uh, leidenfrost.ngc. And I'll put it into my home directory like that. And now this is now displaying, the editor pops up and it shows me the complete uh, G code that's being exported. So I've got some preamble stuff uh, for uh, absolute relative coordinate systems and the, uh, uh, the arc plane G17 sets metric. Uh, there's our tool change information and setting the spindle speed. And then we start right in and our G1 moves hold our feed rate as well. So that looks pretty good. I, sh I can save that file and I should be re ready to load it up on the mill. So let's head out to the, uh, out to the milling machine. Okay, out in the shop, the first thing I needed to do was uh, clamp in a piece of stock in the bandsaw and cut it to length. I then mounted it in the milling machine on top of the sign bar to establish the top angle that I'm going to plane at. And then I ran a series of manual moves, just manually controlling the mill and jogging back and forth uh, in the y-axis to plane that top surface to, uh, um, to the angle that I want. When that was done, the finished block looked like this, and it actually has a pretty nice surface finish to it. I then mounted it the other way on top of the sign bar in the mill and jogged the cutter down uh, near position where it should be. I loaded up the G-code file that we generated, and you can see that the angle is uh, uh, showing the correct uh, position uh, for the cut. The cutter is in the bottom left corner there, and uh, I used this to touch off to make sure that I was in the right position and that the cutter would be moving in the plane that I wanted it. And the moment of truth, we started running our path, and it's uh, uh, cutting really, really nicely and jogging back and forth in the, or feeding back and forth in the Y direction. Uh, I'm not really crazy about how little of the block is held in the vise, but uh, um, this is such a shallow cut, uh, I thought I could get away with it, and it, it seemed to work fine. I'd never cut anything heavier without a much better hold on the block. When it was done, it looked pretty good. The uh, um, the ridges don't don't hold up very well in aluminum. Uh, they uh, seem to collapse a little bit because the metal's so soft. If I was going to do it again, I'd probably do it in brass. I had to clean it up a little bit on the with some sandpaper to get it uh, to clean all the way through, and then rub it down with acetone. Then I heated it up in the oven and uh, dropped water on. Um, I think that those ragged edges from that soft aluminum are kind of tearing the droplet up a little bit. But you can see that it is working and it's running uh, uphill, especially the smaller drops that uh, break off. The, uh, um, I wasn't able to get it to cut, climb the full height, so it's, I've got it propped up a little bit. Uh, but it is working. Okay, well that's the end of our series on creating paths with uh, Python in FreeCAD. Um, if this was helpful or if you'd like to see more end-to-end uh, -end, uh, projects like this, uh, let me know in the comments or comment on the FreeCAD forum uh, or throw me some ideas and uh, we'll see what we can do. Hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.